In the last video, we've created this uh, custom node that allows us to control any effect on our hair curve. So let's put it to use and actually create those effects. If you haven't watched that video, go and do because uh, we're going to use it a lot here and it's uh, better if you know what it does, okay? If you don't want to build this, you can go and download the whole setup from the link in the description. You can also check out my Stylized Hair Pro, which is a much more advanced version of this, where you can create stuff like curls, braids, dynamic hair, and all sorts of stuff. You can find that in the description as well. So, we're gonna start with the basic shape. We have our hair, and if you wanna know how to set up hair curls on your character, uh, go and watch one of those videos. Here we have a single curve, and I've hidden the base below so that we can focus just on this. So let's give it thickness with a curve to mesh. And for the profile, we're gonna use a simple curve circle. This is a bit big, so let's drop the radius to something reasonable, something like this. To have variable thickness along the curve, we're gonna use a set curve radius on our hair curve. Here, this controls the thickness. So, firstly, let's pinch uh, this curve at both ends. Here, we're gonna bring our curve range that we've uh, made in the previous video and plug it into the radius. For this, I'm gonna use mode 2. Now, the resolution is a bit off, so let's resample our hair curve and give it some more points, 101. Remember, mode 2 was the one that, and I've added this preview, just so I can uh, show you what's going on. You don't really need it, but uh, when this is checked, our gradient looks like this, up and down, and we can move it. So we want to pinch the hair curve at both ends, so here it has to be zero. For that, we increase the spread. So let's look at it with the geometry. Increase the spread up to the middle, so 0 0.5. Now we smooth up the middle with the ease out. There it is. Okay, so whether this is uh, open or closed is down to this uh, mean value. But as you can see, it pinches both ends uh, at the same time. And we want individual controls for the tip and for the root. Well, for that we're gonna need a mask. So let's create one. But first, let's create a simple setup to preview the gradients. So at the end here, I'll set material and select the material. Then here on the hair curve, let's store named attribute. Give it some name, doesn't matter what. Then in the shader, get rid of the BSDF, just add an attribute node, and put the same name. Now if we plug anything here, it will show in the material view. So we are creating a mask, let's copy the curve range, reset these, and increase the contrast to about 0.8. Now, with these min and max, we can set individual values for both ends of the curve. And we'll probably use this uh, many times, so let's rename this to mask. Now remember, this min was pinching the ends, so let's plug our mask here. Okay, and now with these two, we have individual controls for the tip and for the root. Nice. So let's start creating some controls. We want these to be normal 0 to 1 sliders, so make it a subtype of factor, and from 0 to 1. I'll call these tip open and root open. Okay. There. Works great. Now, let's make a control for the thickness of the root and the tip. 
first let's drop a math node here multiply and this will control the thickness now of course to that we're gonna add our curve range but this time i want the first mode this one and actually we want half of this gradient up to here so to this i'll add a mix node from 0 to 0.5 and now these will be the thickness for either end and we can shift the influence with this slider okay but we don't want zero thickness because that just disappears the geometry we want some uh, minimum value here like 0 0.01 so that it's thin but still there now we can set our control to be this minimum value but what i like to do is uh, add to this 0 0.01 and then this could be 0 just for looks and also we don't want any negative values so let's uh, create the controls this will be tip thickness and this will be root thickness we want it to be from 0 up and let's set the default at 1 like this and the same for the root. Then this factor will shift the influence either way, but uh, we need to smooth it up. I'll ease this to about 0 0.5. I'll call this like this, root tip with little arrows in between. And we should probably bring the contrast so we have that control and here you can see we have a thickness for this a thickness for that we can move it and if i drop the contrast it will smooth it up now the next thing is uh, i want a way to kind of inflate this uh, tip up a little bit to bulge it up so that it's uh, not so thin well, for that we can use an interesting math fact and that is that if we power, right, exponentiate this uh, gradient here and what this will do is as long as this gradient is between 0 and 1, it's going to shift the values one way or the other. If you think about it, if it's uh, 0.5 and we square it, 0.5 times 0.5, it's going to be 0.25, so less. So it's shifted towards zero. If we cube it, it's gonna be even more. And this will happen to all the values of the gradient, except the ends where it's zero and one. So no matter what power you raise it on, it's still gonna be zero and one. So the ends won't change, just the values in between will shift one way or the other. So let's see it practically. If I lower this exponent, well, that's a bit finicky. Let's uh, invert this by subtracting it from 1. And then we invert again after the power. So now I can increase this instead. And here you can see the tip is uh, bulging up. Okay, so now you want to determine how much we want here. I would say about 10. 15, let's use 15. So we'll do like this mix node from 1 to 15. However, if I set this to 0.5, this uh, doesn't look like uh, halfway between this and this. It's more closer to this end. And that's because exponentiation is uh, not linear. So there's a lot happening here and not a lot happening here. So if I draw the minimum and the maximum, I'd say halfway is uh, around here. So let's see. Yeah, usually it's around 0.2. Depends on what you put here, but we're gonna use uh, 0.2 as the midpoint. 
and that's not necessary, but it's gonna make a nicer control. So here we'll plug another mix node from zero to one. Okay, same thing. But this one will rim up with a float curve. So we want the midpoint, 0.5, to become 0.2. Okay, and this will create this curve. And now this is a much nicer, much more natural control. Okay, small thing, but a better user experience. So this thing will be tip bulge. We can get rid of this. Well, I say tip, it's inflating both ends. And I don't find much use in bulging up the root. If you want a wider base, we can use the root open. So to me, that's an unnecessary control. I just want to focus on the tip. So we're gonna mask out the root. Let's uh, grab our mask, make it full contrast, plug it in here. Then one of these will be this one. That's just the tip. We set the other one to one and we plug our birch here. So there, it's affecting only the tip. Okay. And if you want a control for the root, you would plug it in here. I don't. Next thing is, you can see how the hair tip is uh, kinda pointy, and that's fine, that's what we want, but maybe you want a more rounded off shape. And you can do the math to find out what you need to do to the gradient, and that's what I did, uh, and it's uh, one of those things where you think you're clever and you do this long calculation and the answer ends up to be one, and then you feel dumb. Well, in this case, it's just square root this, and there. But let's make this uh, adjustable. So we have this, and the square root at one, mix between the two, and we can adjust how round we want it to be. So let's output that. I'm gonna call this tip shape. Okay, let's have a way to flatten this hair strand. What you can do is come back to the profile curve. We can squish it with a transform geometry node. Now, what we can do, we can scale this down either on X or Y, doesn't matter, and it flattens it, but it flattens the whole curve where, you know, I want it to be variable. But we can't do this here. This is just a single value. So we have to be a bit clever how we do this. So I'm gonna show you my solution. If you come up with a better one, let me know. What I'll do is I'm gonna make a copy of the curve to mesh. The squashed profile gets this one and the normal one in this. So we have the normal strand and the flattened one. And now I'm gonna mix between the two. So mix, and here we're gonna use a vector mix for this one. Then on the squashed geometry, we use a sample index vector, and we sample the position. And in the index, we plug the index field like this. Then this can go in the bottom socket of the mix. In the top socket, we can use this on the normal curve, but it's probably not needed. We can just plug the position field and it's gonna read from it anyway. Then to our geometry here, we set position and we plug the mix into the position. Now, this kind of works uh, as before, but now here, we can plug our curve range. However, it's not gonna work because this geometry here is a mesh, whereas uh, this only works on curves. So over here, on our naked hair curve, 
before we turn it into a mesh, we can capture attribute and now plug our curve range in here. Then this we transfer to the mix factor. And there, we can now manipulate this. We're gonna use mode 1. For the position, I want half of it from 0 to 0.5. And these two will flatten the tip and the root. So let's create the controls. This will be similar to the thickness controls, so I'll do them quickly. Flatten tip, flatten root. the influence slider and maybe the contrast also I'll ease this up so that we don't have any sharp bits finally we need to make the rotations for that we need to set curve tilt after the set radius In it we plug our trusty other node, the one that just adds a bunch of values. Then we can start to have uh, our rotations. Bring up our curve range. Here it will be mode 2. Then the max value will twist the curve at this position. So at 0 it will be the root, at 1 it will be the tip, but we need the adaptive ease, so we have that natural follow from the edge. Without it, it will look weird. Bring up the ease to about uh, 0.5. And if we set the position at 0.5, as well as the spread, we have a mid rotation. So let's have three copies of this. Okay. This will be the tip, this one will leave the mid, and this will be for the root. So let's output those. Twist tip, twist mid, twist root. We can make custom rotations by uh, having another one easing on 0.5, adaptive ease on, and now we can control the position, spread, and amount. So we can output those three. And you can have as many as these custom rotations as you wish, I'll just add one. And finally we can have one of these, to be a rotation for the whole curve. There we go. To finish this up, let's have a way to add a custom profile curve, add a switch node to the profile curve. In the bottom socket, we can add an object info node, and now we can output the switch. Let's call it use custom profile. And get that object socket. Call that custom profile. So here if you select some curve you can check on this and it will use it as a profile. The other thing is if we swap this curve to mesh with a curve to mesh with UV. I'm not gonna show you the setup for this because uh, I already did in this video. But uh, this will create a UV map for us. And we can check that if I go to the shader, add a new image texture, color grid. We can now set up UV mapping for it. And there, very nice. We can have uh, materials. And there it is, we've created a very useful stylized hair modifier. If you want to know how you can use this and actually create a hairstyle, you can go and watch uh, that video. Again, go and check out the more advanced version of this in the description. Okay? See you next time.